Welcome to the Complete Christian Podcast. Uh, welcome to this episode of uh, the Complete Christian Podcast. We have Marin with us from Clover. Uh, I'm sorry, from Clovis, California. Uh, Marin is a stay-at-home mother, and she's also an author. She come to give us a testimony about uh, what the Lord has done in her life. Marin, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's great to be here with you. Amen. Amen. So yeah, quickly, just uh, not quickly, but uh, however long it takes you, um, give us uh, the rundown on, you know, what's happened in your life over the course of, you know, since the Lord, since the Lord walked you into salvation and um, what has happened since then? Okay. So my story has a lot to do with my anxiety disorder known as OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder. It's referred to as a doubting disorder because something you can 100% know for sure one moment, the next moment you doubt just as strongly. So many people associate OCD with a need for cleanliness and order or a fear of germs. And while this can definitely be outward signs of OCD, there's an inner struggle that not many people are aware of. At the core of OCD are intrusive thoughts that can cause high levels of anxiety. So during early childhood, going all the way back to kindergarten, my intrusive thoughts revolved around behaving just right. I accepted Jesus as my savior at a, at a very young age, but it was more about behaving right for me at that point. Um, I, I, I didn't understand the grace. And so any little mistake would send me into a tailspin of shame and despair I would feel the need to tell on myself over and over and over again until I was um, sure that I had received forgiveness. I was driven by the doubt that I would be rejected if I made any little mistakes. Most of my struggle was internal though. So although it did show up in nervous habits like biting my fingernails or pulling out my eyebrow hairs or my eyelashes, most of it was internal and it was masked by labels such as worry wart or having an overly sensitive conscience. So my parents didn't know the extent of my inner struggle and felt like I was a child who just needed maybe some extra reassurance. So another example of my childhood OCD episodes revolved around germs. Uh, I was plagued with intrusive thoughts that my germs would kill somebody and I would end up being a murderer and there was no forgiveness for me then. Um, I was uncomfortable being in close proximity to people I didn't want to touch. I didn't want to share food. I didn't want to, um, I, well, I would wash my hands repeatedly so my germs wouldn't have any chance of spreading to anybody else and possibly killing them. It was such a heavy burden to carry as a child. And it haunted me for about a year before I was finally released from that thought pattern. So in my childhood, my intrusive thoughts jumped around and were never clearly identified as a mental illness, but I found relief from my thoughts through sports and studying. I threw myself into both with a lot of passion and I found joy in volleyball. And in spite of my OCD, I earned a full ride scholarship to Fresno Pacific University. And during college, I had an unexpected, uh, unexpected and unexplained 10 years rest from OCD. I was still driven to succeed from a fear of failure, but my ability to function every day was not affected. I excelled at my sports and studying became a, I became a team captain, an All-American, a national champion, and maintained a perfect grade point average. I felt like I was free from that world of fear, free from, from the anxiety that was just so crippling in my childhood, and I was loving it. Then my adult episodes hit. With no studying or sports to hide in any longer, I came face to face with my OCD. My book smarts and my confidence no longer mattered as doubt began attacking my mind. I couldn't believe it was back. I quickly lost hope. I had thoughts like, is this going to be life from now on? Am I going to be tormented by fears and alarm bells going off in my mind and body for the rest of my life? And I began questioning my faith in a loving God. You know, I'd grown up in the church and received Christ as my savior, but I, all of a sudden, all of that, I began to doubt. Um, how could a loving God create me with OCD? And if there wasn't a loving God, was I going to spend eternity in hell? These thoughts plagued me constantly. One night with anxiety high, 
and sleep elusive, I cried out to God for a sign, any sign. You know, who are you, God? Are you there? Do you see me? Do you love me? And I woke up the next morning to an email in my inbox. It was a daily devotional that I had been receiving. And most of them hadn't really at this time um, spoken directly to what I was going through. But this time, the devotional's focus verse was Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. So through it all, God has fought for me. He claimed my battle. And looking back now that I'm healthy, I know exactly who fought my battle and who got me through. He's shown me that he is bigger than my OCD and still has a purpose for me in spite of my mental illness, not in spite of my mental illness, excuse me, but because of it, he can use me and my OCD and my story to further his kingdom. Second Corinthians 1, 4 says, he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. Today, I am the author of a children's picture book called My Little Monster, which describes my experience with OCD. So now I feel passionate about speaking about my experiences and hopefully helping others who may be in their own mental health crisis. God has comforted me, and now it's my turn to point other people back to Jesus and his hope. Amen. Amen. That's really good. What are some... Uh... What are some uh, coping skills that you use on like a regular basis um, that might assist somebody who's going through the same thing? Right. So there's a Bible verse that I really find a lot of peace in, and it is Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I have learned that in my mental illness to turn to the Bible, to turn to the truths, what promises has God given me that I can cling to? You know, uh, the Lord is an ever-present help in times of, of need. You know, I may feel like this is going to last forever, but weeping may last for the night, but joy comes with the morning. You know, just yeah. clinging to those promises. Yeah, yeah it's, good to, it's good to know and to have hope that that mm -hmm. it's only temporary, like that feeling right. that you're feeling, like it feels like the world is, is, is coming to a screeching halt and that there's nothing that can fix the problem, but right. that hope gives us the, the knowledge and understanding that this is, this feeling you feel is temporary. Yeah. I think you feel is temporary. I read once, I forget who the author was, but the Psalm, you know, I, yay though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it says you walk through it, not yeah. that you're going to camp there and live there. You're going to yeah. get through it. Yeah, that's really good. That's mm -hmm. really good. And that's the best advice, really, for any situation, um, you know, to turn to Scripture because, you know, God is the creator of all things. And there's there's nothing new under the sun, you know, that mm -hmm. we, the, the doctors and, and, and science might have new uh, understandings on like how to treat these things or like right. what they are, where they can be identified in the mind and these right. kind of things. But these things have been around forever. And that's why exactly. the, the answer has always been in front of us is directly in God's word. And that's yes. why he says, no matter what you're, no matter what you're going through, just cast it upon me and I'll, I will take mm -hmm. it from you. I will make it light and I will give you peace. Yes. Uh, that's beautiful. Um, so where um where can people uh, pick up your book uh, if they uh, they want to get it for their children? That's a, a really awesome thing. Sure, it's on Amazon and it's called My Little Monster. It's a story about OCD. Um, and I also have a Facebook page that they can follow me on. It's My Little OCD Monster, and I have more of my testimony there and just uh, things to watch out for. Okay, cool. I really like that name too. Uh, I, I, I'm actually, I'm actually gonna buy it for my nephew. Uh, oh, cool. Because my sister is is really big on you know knowledge and and I really feel that she would really like a book like this. Just to it it, it brings awareness to things and also yes. it can help you to see to to kind of 
be prepared for those things because it might not even be your child who might right. struggle with this. It might, you know, your child also has friends and then, you know, when kids are involved with groups and all different kinds of groups of kids, whether that's at school or sports or, um, you know, with family, there's so many different friend groups that kids have as they learn and as they meet people in their lives. And so it's also good for kids to understand what it is too. Uh, they're not going to understand completely fully um, like an adult would, but to have a basic knowledge uh, and to, for them to be able to be sensitive also to these situations and, yeah. and to offer for them to offer prayer to another kid in any kind of trying situation is a beautiful thing. Yeah. It creates that sense of empathy for others. And um, like you said, how can, how can I help in this situation? And I have another book coming out um, soon. It's going to print right now. It's going to be called the very best me. And it's all about how the support people can be the best help to somebody with OCD, you know, oh, wow, that's great. The type of um, advice, you know, don't, don't, don't come along beside them and tell them, you know, Oh, you'll be fine. Just, get over it or yeah. just don't worry or pull yourself up by the bootstraps and you'll get through it, you know, um, but to listen, to be patient, to pray, to encourage this person. You know, I don't know what it is to, to feel these things that you are feeling, but I'm going to stand beside you and see you through it. Yeah. Yeah. Just simply being tough through those situations uh, it, it a lot of times becomes more of a makes it even heavier, makes right. the situation heavier when you just try to plow through a situation right. with, it, without acknowledging it, you know, processing what's going on and then being able to move on. You can't really move on if you just bury it or yeah. if, we, if we don't look at it in the face and if we don't address it directly, it just becomes a, 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 a the, the foundation of, of building blocks of more problems, you know? Right. And they just keep going and going and going. And I find that it also is a very heavy burden to believe that it's up to you to solve it. Because I believed that through some of my episodes, it was, oh my goodness, how am I going to get myself out of this situation instead of, God, I need you here. And you're yeah. bigger than this. And you know, the answer, I put this in your hands, help me through this. Yeah. 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 And, and that's what, what you were saying in Psalm 23 too. Like, yeah, we're walking through this valley. You know, mm -hmm. we're walking through this, this shadow. We're walking, we're walking through this situation. Yes. God is with us, but we also have to do the walking. You right. Know? Cause if, if God just does it all for us, then we won't understand what we just right. did. Like, how did I overcome this? How can I, how can I be prepared for the next attack or the next exactly. situation if I don't know what I did last time? You know, right. if I can't, if I, if I don't know how I got to the end and God just did it 100% for me, for mm -hmm. one, I'm not going to, I'm not going to understand it. And also I kind of will have a lack of appreciation for it or sympathy for others who also struggle with the same thing. They just say, oh, well, just, right. just go to God. He'll take care of it. And no, yeah, there <laughs> comes that, that element of faith yeah. and, you know, you, and stepping out in faith. You may be scared, but do it scared. Do it. You've got to move forward in faith. Amen. Amen. Um, what's your, what, what is, I know you've met, you mentioned quite a few scriptures uh, yeah. and you mentioned some really good scriptures, uh, some really blessed scriptures, but what is your, what would you say would be like your identifying scripture for your life or right. uh, your favorite scripture? So my favorite scripture right now is that verse that he gave me the night that I just cried out, um, not knowing who God was. And it's Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. I feel like that gives me just such hope for the future because I know OCD can be a lifelong battle. And so I'm not going to just sit here and believe that I'm healed, although he could have healed me. I'm not sure. But if it comes back, I know he's got me. And I know that with with his help, I can make it through. Yeah. So, uh, and tell me if I'm wrong, but it pretty much what, what you're saying is that if, if you, re if you removed God from your life, or if you stopped praying, or if you stopped studying the word, that there's a, a good chance that those feelings and those emotions would come right back into your life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because there's that element of fear of, you know, is this coming back? Is this going to be stronger next time? Am I going to make it next time? 
And without really delving into what uh, promises the God ha- that God has given me, there's this sense of hopelessness, you know, and mm. that verse just gives me the hope that, no, I, he's going to make it, he's going to get me through this. Yeah, and you know his word tells us that you know with without without God in our life we we can really do nothing apart from right. him apart from him we can do nothing and through him you know through him we can do all things through Christ right. because he's the one he is our strength so that's that's really beautiful um besides Jesus uh who is the your who who would you say is like your favorite person of interest in the bible okay so it's probably kind of obvious but it's doubting Thomas <laughs> <laughs> because you know I feel like I have so much in common with him the need to prove for myself and know for sure and I just find it beautiful that in spite of the doubt God met me and God met Thomas where he was and revealed himself to him and you know he didn't hold that doubt against him he still had mercy and grace and showed himself and and made Thomas stronger in his faith because of it. So yeah. I feel like he's done the same for me. Amen. Yeah, yeah, and Thomas is attributed for bringing the the gospel all the way through Asia, through mm-hmm. through India or through I'm sorry, yeah, through India, through Asia, through India, through like Pakistan, Afghanistan, that whole part of the world. Uh, Thomas is attributed. They say that Thomas delivered the gospel further than any other apostle so mm-hmm. it's like once god got a hold of thomas thomas right. that doubter but once god knew god knew that once he got a hold of thomas that thomas's heart was just his whole life was going to be dedicated to him and he did right. he would go every he traveled all around the world to tell people how good christ is and how how good god is and that christ was real that he really did rise from the dead right that's beautiful um yeah all right if you could change one thing in the world, one one thing, uh, no matter what it is, anything going on in the world, if you could change the one thing in the world, what would it be and why? Okay, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to give two things. Okay. <laughs> okay, so my first answer would have to be world peace. Um, I think that's something we can all agree upon. But my second answer is more lighthearted. And so I have a mean sweet tooth. So one thing I'd want to change is the creation of zero calorie ice cream. You know, one you could eat and never have to worry about weight gain. So I'm hoping that God treats me to like an ice cream buffet, Baskin 31 flavors, ice cream, you know, style when I get to heaven. So that's what I would change. You know, on that same note, this would be a really good invention for anybody who's scientifically inclined, who's listening. Uh, What about like a fat reducing ice cream like you eat the ice cream oh, and you lose like weight it. like you look like <laughs> as you eat the ice cream it's like a weight loss ice cream you know I like that it. would yes. be like that would be Even the better. ultimate <laughs> snack ever right i'm with you on that <laughs> amen yeah you know it, it's it, it's so hard and 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 I, I think one of the big reasons why we don't have peace around the world is because the world rejects jesus Right. You know, the world the world rejects Jesus at every cost. If you turn on the news, if you, you talk to you, you just go out in public and talk to an average person. Really, I mean, you know, there is more people in public just more focused about themselves and and going about their day and, and being in a hurry all the time than actually stop and focus. Like, where am I going? Like, right. everybody's in a hurry, but where's everybody going in life? Right. You know, everybody's running wild in this world. Like, but where are we going? And the reason, you know, hurry and worry, I say this all the time, hurry and worry are like cousins. So mm-hmm. like, I always remind myself that, that when I get into a hurry, when I get into a hurry, you know that at the end of that hurry, there's going to be also, you're, you're pretty much welcoming worry into your mind. So like, yeah. if I get to move in too fast in my day, like, I'm like, all right, dude, you got to slow down. You got to relax because right. I'll start to get anxious about things and I'll start to wonder and worry. And then my mind goes off into, uh, you know, random land and, uh, and it's and hard I know to really control that. For me, one blessing I mean, it's a blessing in disguise that's come with OCD is that need to know for 100% and that, that, that desire to know that I am right with God, to know that I, where I'm going with my eternity, that I'm living mindful of my eternity. I, I, I asked my husband one day, you know, is that normal? Or is that just something that's OCD? Do most people live with eternity in mind? Or is that something that they just think about at the very end? 
because for me, it is very much a part of every day, you know, um, just the peace that I have that I know that I'm right with God and I know that I'm going to, to heaven and that my job now is to further his kingdom. Um, but it boggles my mind that people can live without the peace. Yeah. 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 Just chaos. Just live in a day-to-day chaos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Day-to-day chaos. And the, so, yeah, the, the promises of God, those promises that you've been talking about, those really like they remove that uncertainty, you know, mm-hmm. from, from, from those feelings, like in the middle of that OCD, you know, mm-hmm. the, the problems, the, the, the promises of God, they, they give us that assurance, you know, his blessed assurance. You know, the Bible talks about his blessed assurance that he, he tells us these things, but sometimes we easily, we easily forget, you know, we can mm-hmm. easily forget like where we're going or what God has already promised us. Even like mm-hmm. we know what he's told us, we know what his promises are, and we know that he keeps his promises, but we can easily get distracted. You know, it, yes. we can easily get distracted and, and then we question it. Well, did he really say that? Like, did he do right. that? And that's why it's so important also to, to journal, you know, to write things yes. down. I know you like to write, you know, like journaling and writing your things down because I have things from years ago, like when I really first started walking with Christ and I randomly will pull up those things and, and I'll just read them and they give me that peace that, okay, yeah. you remember, and, and it brings you back to that state of mind whenever you were either first saved or that, that season that you were in when you wrote those things and you can really sit down with God again and say, okay, uh, now I can, I, I can be at peace. No, I got, I do. I remember you did tell me this. I remember I was praying for this. You promised me this. I somehow lost focus. God helped me to regain that focus and get me back on track because I'm a mess right now. And I need to be, I need to be walking with you instead of trying to be distracted by the world. Cause that's an easy thing to do is to be distracted. Yes. So, I, you know, I found journaling to be excellent as um, with my OCD, um, the doubt I have found that I need to write things down because I'll forget or doubt that, you know, what had happened in that situation. What was my prayer? Did God really answer that specific prayer that way? Oh my goodness. That is amazing. But if I didn't write it down, I'll doubt that it even happened. So I journal everything. I journal my prayers. I journal my devotionals that answered those specific prayers And it is just so encouraging to look back to know, no, look what God has done in your life. Look what he promised when you went through that dark season that he will sustain you. Well, if he will sustain you then, he's going to sustain you now. Amen. Amen. So uh, the book, your book is available on Amazon. Uh, Yes. What's what's the title again? My, my, my little monster, my little monster. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And we'll put the links and everything in the, uh, in the comments and in the, in the notes for, um, for this meeting. Um, Would you like to uh, pray us out? Sure, I'd love to. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with thankful hearts. Um, I thank you for this opportunity to share my testimony, and I just pray that you would bring it to the people who need to hear it, that you would bring the hope, that you would bring the encouragement that, Lord, mental illness uh, is, you're bigger than it. And that you can you can help and you can give direction and you can give hope, Lord. I pray for those who are suffering, that they would see a breakthrough, Father. And I thank you for this podcast and I pray your blessing on it in your heavenly name. Amen. Amen.